Hello and welcome to the Northwest Fusion Group YouTube channel. I'm Ian, G0VGS. Um, today is going to be the first of a short series of videos on something I've been thinking about for a while. And to be honest, I've been waiting and hoping that Raspberry Pis would be more readily available. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case at the moment. So we'll go ahead with it anyway, and it may give you some ideas. And of course, I'm talking about building your own hotspot. I'm going to concentrate on putting the thing together, setting up PyStar, and using it for Yesu System Fusion, or YSF. Hotspots can be a controversial subject, but sometimes they're extremely useful for people. For example, people in retirement homes or people who don't have a repeater or gateway close to them. So let's go ahead with the video. So what are you going to need to make your own hotspot? Well, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi of some kind, a power supply for it, a modem board, and an SD card. So let's have a look at the Raspberry Pi in more detail. This is a Raspberry Pi Zero. As you can see, it's quite small, and this is the board you'll find in the mini hotspots you buy on the web ready built. The main advantage of the Pi Zero is cost. It's the cheapest of the Raspberry Pis to buy, and in normal times costs around £15. On the edge of the board, you can see a mini HDMI port, a mini USB port, and a power connector. In order to use these directly, you're going to need an adapter of some kind. And this is a typical mini USB to standard USB adapter, for example. There's also the micro SD card slot. There's no wired ethernet port, this board relies on Wi-Fi, and the original Pi Zero only supports 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi. There's a new version of this board, the Pi Zero 2, which supports 5 GHz Wi-Fi, and would probably be the better option. It is possible to use wired Ethernet via a USB to Ethernet adapter. This is the Raspberry Pi version 3. This is my preferred option for several reasons. Firstly, there's good support for peripherals. There's a wired ethernet port and four standard USB ports. This means that you can plug in a keyboard and mouse or use a wireless keyboard and mouse via a dongle. And there's also a standard HDMI port to connect up to a monitor. There is of course the usual micro SD port as well. Next, you're going to need a micro SD card to put the operating system on. We'll be covering this later in the video. Finally, you're going to need a modem board of some kind. These are known as MMDVM boards or Pi Hats. MMDVM stands for Multimode Digital Voice Modem. They're known as hats because they sit on the top of the Raspberry Pi. You can get MMDVM boards the same shape as the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Pi Zero. Either board will work on either. Here's a full size board. This is actually a radioless board, but a radio can be wired to it via a set of pins. You can even get duplex boards to make a repeater. The one we're going to use is somewhat smaller and has the same footprint as the Raspberry Pi Zero. This is a simplex board and usually comes with a couple of sockets and an SMA socket that need to be soldered to the board. No need to worry, they're really quite easy to solder. When it's done, it should look something like this. The SMA connector on one side and the sockets on the other. Now you'll be able to see why we call it a hat. It plugs straight into the Raspberry Pi like so. You can see that both boards are identical in size 
and this is exactly what's inside a ready-built mini hotspot. You can also buy a small display that sits on top of both boards, but I'm not going to cover that here. Pop the aerial on and we're good to go. Be aware that some of these boards only support UHF. If you need VHF, be sure to check when buying. Obviously, it would be a good idea to buy a case of some kind to protect the electronics and keep things tidy. There are plenty of options available. Having dealt with the hardware, we're now going to need an operating system. So the first thing we need to do is to insert our SD card into the computer. My computer doesn't have um, a slot for a micro SD card, so I'm using a carrier that just sits in there into the carrier adapter, and I'll put that into my computer. So the next thing we need to do is to download the software. To do that, we go to pystar.uk, and then down the page here, you'll see a link for downloads. Click that and click download PyStar. There looks to be a lot of files here, but don't worry too much about it. We're after PyStar RPI for the Raspberry Pi. And there are three options here. I normally choose the latest version. Click on that and download it. And once we've downloaded the software, the next thing we'll want to do is to put it onto the SD card. And we need another piece of software for that. There are various pieces of software out there that do this job. I like to use Bellina Etcher, and you'll find that at bellina.io slash etcher. You can see that link up here at the top of the browser. You can download it here. It sends I've got Windows, so I can click on that and it will download the file for Windows. It's also available for Mac. Once you've downloaded Bellina Etcher, install it, and that will come into play very shortly. So the next thing we need to do is find the file that we downloaded, and you can see here that it's a zip archive. So just double click it, and then extract all, accept the path that it gives you, and click extract. And that's going to take a minute or two, depending on the speed of your computer. We're not actually going to work from the file manager. Uh, in this instance, what we're going to do is we're going to use Bellina Etcher to do all that work for us. So once the download is completed, we can actually close down the file manager for now. Start the program Bellina Etcher and you'll be given this screen. So what we need to do is select flash from file, click on that, select the Raspberry Pi software and click open. Then select where you want it to go. So you click on target and it will usually find your SD card automatically. Click on that, you can tell it's your SD card. For me, it's a 32 gig SD card, so there it is. Click on select and then click on flash. It will just check that you really want to do this. Click yes and it will now flash the card and then verify it. And this is going to take anything up to 20 minutes. Again, depending on the speed of your machine, it might take shorter or longer. Once we've done that, we've actually completed the Raspberry Pi installation onto the SD card, and that's our job done. The next thing to do will be to insert the SD card into the Raspberry Pi, power it all up, and start to configure it. And we'll be doing that in part two. Well, I hope you found that useful. In part two, we'll look at setting up PyStar, and by that point, you should be able to get on air with your hotspot. I'd just like to say a massive thanks to all the new subscribers that have come along. So many of you, it's unbelievable. We're way over 500 subscribers now, I can't believe it. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you have enjoyed the video, please do consider subscribing, it's totally free. If you click the bell icon, It'll let you know every time I release a new video. And please do tick that like button. It helps the channel. So until the next time, thanks very much for watching. Cheerio.